welcome to a new video in Horror to America's TV. Today, I am very excited to present the next topic because this is a topic that you selected. Today, I will be teaching you about how to improve crop performance with CEA technologies. This is very related to greenhouse management. I know greenhouse management can be something really complex, but in this presentation, I will, I will summarize uh, the most important variables that you can manage inside of the system and how the plant respond to these variables. My name is Carla Garcia, Hort America's Technical Service, and today I will be teaching you how to improve crop performance with CEA technologies. The more you analyze, the more you can manage. This is something really important to understand. Inside of a growing system, there are a lot of variables that can be measured. So it's really important not only to measure these variables, but to understand these variables and analyze the variables in order to make the correct decisions inside of the system. The more control you have inside of the system, you will have better results, consistency, and more predictable results. So these are really important characteristics for any grower. Knowledge is power, right? So it's important to recognize that we need to study. We need to really understand how plants behave. So we need to have a deep understanding about plant physiology if you are working inside of that greenhouse and you are looking to have good results. There are a lot of variables inside of a growing system, but, but here I have a list of the most important variables. We have temperature, we have airspeed, humidity, CO2, light, nutrients, and root zone. So an indoor system will include greenhouse production and also plant factory production, which is with uh, just artificial light. So both systems are uh, categorized as indoor system. And um, it's important also to recognize that we'll, we will have like different response uh, implants inside of this system. So I will focus on how the plant respond inside of indoor system specific to a greenhouse. So here are the different variables I are already mentioned. And I have a brief summary of how these variables can improve your production. For example, if you understand temperature, you can optimize the plant development. If you understand wind, you can optimize the gas exchange. And this includes photosynthesis. And it's not only important uh, because of photosynthesis is also important. You have like more uniform ambient inside of the greenhouse and also can affect the nutrient uptake. Then we have light, which is obviously really important. We need to understand light in order to provide uh, the conditions to the plant to grow. Uh, there are different ways to measure light, like for example, light quality or light quantity. I will go over these topics. Then we have humidity. Humidity uh, is very related to plant health, is also related to nutrient uptake, and is really important to always maintain the humidity that is recommended for your crop inside of the growing system. Then we have nutrient content. Obviously, nutrient content is really important, and if you are working with hydroponics, it's also important to understand how the plant is taking up the nutrients and which nutrients are essential and need to be provided in um, some quantities that you can look up. For example, uh, vegetables like lettuce will have a um, specific uh, requirement of nutrients and other crops, like for example, tomato will have other requirements. So it's really important to always look up uh, which is uh, the nutrients that are required for your crop. And then we have CO2, which is also important for photosynthesis. So I will go over each of these variables. So let's learn about how these variables can affect your plant growth. So let's start with temperature. I think temperature is one of the most important variables for growers. When we are growing plants, the first thing we do is to look at the recommended levels of temperature, and we try to maintain these conditions inside of the growing system. But how plants respond to temperature? 
It's very important to understand that plants respond to the average daily temperature, meaning that you can be flexible. You can, you can have fluctuation on temperature inside of the growing system, but the average daily temperature should be between the recommended levels. Of course, this is not applicable to extreme temperature, like really hot or really cold. Another thing that we can speak about temperature is how temperature affects plant metabolism. When you have higher temperature than recommended, the plant will start to increase the metabolism, meaning that you will have a plant that will develop more quickly, but with less energy. On the other hand, when you have a reduction in temperature, when the temperature is lower than recommended, you will have a slower metabolism, meaning that the plant, for example, can take more days to harvest. We can separate temperature in day temperature and night temperature. Day temperature will affect photosynthesis directly and night temperature will affect respiration. As we know, respiration is a process that the plants do during the night and is a process that can waste energy. This is why when we look up the recommended levels of temperature for different crops, we will find that the night temperature is always uh, lower than the day temperature. So by having low temperature during the night, we can save energy that the plant can use the next day for other actions like, for example, to move some sugar. When we speak about how to maintain temperature inside of a growing system, this can be really complex. I mean, this is uh, a topic that you can cover on greenhouse design, but how can we reduce temperature inside of a greenhouse? A greenhouse is a system that by itself will create heat inside. Right? So if you want to reduce temperature inside of a greenhouse, you will need to have the process of evaporation. By having this process, heat will be consumed. It's very important to understand this because if you have shake clothes, if you have, for example, vents or windows or fans, that will only uh, avoid the heat, like the, the greenhouse to heat inside of the system. But the process of evaporation will reduce temperature in comparison with the outside. Let's move now to wind. Wind is a very important variable. When we think about airflow, we most of the time think that this is useful to create like uniform ambient inside of a growing system. And you are right, but there are also other functions that are related to airflow. Some of them are photosynthesis and nutrient uptake. So on the leaves, we have small pores that we call stomates, and the stomates are in charge of the gas exchange and also transpiration. So when we don't have good airflow over the surface of the leaf, this will create a resistance that we call boundary layer. The boundary layer will affect how the plant is taking up the nutrients and will also affect how the plant is doing the gas exchange for photosynthesis. So it's very important to maintain the boundary layer resistance as small as possible. How we do this? We need good airflow. If we don't have good airflow, uh, you will have some problems, like for example, deep burn. Deep burn is a very common problem inside of greenhouses. And most of the time uh, when we're growing lettuce, this problem will be related to airflow. So by keeping good airflow within uh, your system, you can promote the plant to take up water, to take up nutrients and with them calcium and avoid deep burn. The recommended levels for air speed inside of a growing system are 0.2 to 1 meters per second. And there are different options of fans that you can use. It's very important to always uh, look up to have good ventilation inside of your growing system. So moving now to humidity. Relative humidity refers to the amount of water vapor in the air as compared with the amount of water that the air could hold. Here is a table showing the most common crops that we grow inside greenhouses and the recommended levels of humidity. 
plants love humidity, but it's very important to always maintain the recommended levels. If you have very high humidity levels, you can have some problems with fungi. And if you have very low humidity levels, you can have problems with this tomato. Relative humidity is also very related to transpiration. So if you have situations with very high humidity or very low humidity, this will also affect transpiration. And as we learned already, calcium is a nutrient that moves within the water. So if you have a condition of relative humidity that is not good for your plant, you can also affect nutrient uptake. So remember, very high humidity levels or very low humidity levels are stressful for the plant. If you have too high humidity levels, you can reduce the yield, you can affect the nutrient uptake. You can also affect how the plant is uh, doing pollination and you can also affect, affect plant respiration. If you have too low humidity levels, estomata will close to reduce transpiration in order to save water you will have then a reduction in photosynthesis and smaller leaves. Another important variable is CO2. CO2 is very related to photosynthesis. Here on the x-axis, we have CO2 concentration. And on the y-axis, we have the net photosynthetic rate. Ambient levels of CO2 are around 400 ppm. These levels of CO2 can be good for plant growth and development. But we also know that if we enrich our system with CO2, we can improve plant performance. Research has demonstrated that if you increase the levels of CO2, you can increase the yield from 14 to 45% in common crops. But in order to have this result, you should increase the levels from 400 ppm to 1000 ppm. Last variable is light. We sometimes forget about the importance of this variable. Light is very related also to plant growth. Here you can see the DLI levels recommended for crops. DLI is the amount of light that a plant is getting per day. By knowing minimum and optimum levels of light inside of your growing system, you can improve light management and also plant performance. For example, when we are growing plants in a greenhouse, sometimes radiation will also promote heat inside of the system. By measuring the light, you can notice when the plant is getting optimum levels of light, and then you can decide to eliminate the rest of the light that can be also heating the system. On the other hand, if levels of the light are below the needs, you can also consider the use of supplemental light. In order to monitor all important variables inside your system, you will require the best equipment. In North Americas, we offer Theory Megahertz, a platform that you can connect to multiple sensors and can be a very useful tool to improve management inside of your system. Remember, the more you measure, the more you know, and you can then take better decisions inside of the system and improve the management of your plants. Hope you enjoyed this section. Please leave any comment if you have questions and see you on the next one.